Hey y'all, hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. This is Straight Facts Commentary where I give you my unpopular opinions in everything pop culture. So please, please, please stick around and subscribe for more. Hey y'all, I am back again with another video and in today's video, you see the title, you see the title. We are going to be speaking about Chloe Bailey and she ended up speaking a couple of weeks ago on I believe a TikTok live where she was speaking about her record label and just different issues that she's kind of experienced with it very briefly. So I wanted to show you guys that and also talk about it a little bit. So if you're interested in her, female rap, pop, conspiracy theory, sharing topics, my popular opinions, whatever, I feel like getting into for real. Go on ahead and subscribe and let's get into this video. So as you guys may or may not know, which I'm sure you guys do know, at this point, Chloe Bailey released her album Trouble in Paradise, which it wasn't a bad album at all. I did a review on it. Um, it's not my favorite album of hers. I do like the Caribbean like inspiration um, behind Trouble in Paradise. And there were several songs that I did really love off of it, um, like three or four in particular that were really solid for me. Um, but I did actually like In Pieces better, which I think is an unpopular opinion uh, of that. I feel like a lot of people liked Trouble in Paradise more. But basically, she was on live with the fans and she was talking about the album. She was just talking about herself in general, just interacting with her, uh, with her fans, which I really appreciate Chloe Bailey for doing because not a lot of artists really do that. Like these big artists or these artists who like they don't interact with their fans like barely 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 the only time it seems like people interact with their fans is if there's drama that they're coming on the internet to clear up so you might see them tweet or you might see them hop on spaces or might see them hop on instagram live or tiktok live to talk about something that something that happened you know what i'm saying but they don't interact with their fans like they don't give their fans really much of anything outside of you know, obviously the music, like they don't go on live. They don't do little live performances of their music. They don't talk to the fans and just key key with them and see how they're doing and interact. Like these artists are very much, I'm going to put out my work and I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go on tour and then I'm going to go. But like, they don't interact with them much outside of that. Um, but Chloe does. So I really like that she does that, but she was basically talking about how she, you know, she doesn't have a tour lined up for this album, which I wasn't really surprised to hear only because, um, you know, the album, I don't even know what it sold. Um, it's, it wasn't a commercial album and it wasn't being pushed properly. So while Chloe was on live, the fans were basically asking like, Hey, uh, are there any live performances? Um, are you going on tour for your album? Like what's going on? And basically Chloe explained saying, Hey, no, um, you know, that costs money and, you know, my label this, my label that. So she kind of went into it. And I really appreciate Chloe for that too, because, you know, she didn't have to say that. I feel like she's really transparent, like when it comes down to it about, um, different issues in the industry or different things that, uh, artists go through or, you know, different roadblocks that might be in their way. She has talked about industry related things before and shed light on it. Industry, the business changes a lot. Mm -hmm. What is something that a lot of people, fans, viewers, listeners, they don't really know about the music industry. Like it would shock them to learn that this is part of the process, right? We just be like, all right, where's the music? Let's go. You know, you can create music all day long, mm -hmm. but it's like, especially if you're signed to a label, you can't control your release dates yeah. or when things get released. Also, musicians don't make a lot of money in the mm. music industry. That's why you see a lot of people, they have brand deals and brand sponsorships. That's where the coin comes from in touring. But yeah. like music itself, you're actually losing money. Wow. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? Uh-huh. Oh, my oh God. you want to know something else? Yeah. I learned this because I would produce Sis and I's records. Mm -hmm. Producers outside will get paid a huge lump sum, but because I would produce Sis and I's records, I couldn't get paid because I was the producer within the group. Now, hold up. Hold up. You're doing the same work, but not getting yes. a dime from it because it's your yes. own music. Yes. Now, how does that And make also, sense? like, I don't know if it changed within Grammys, but you know, like how they have producer of the year. I learned it from Imogene Heat because, mm -hmm. you know, she produces a lot of her stuff. So does Grime. So does Bjork. They couldn't be contenders for producer of the year because they were the ones producing their own bodies of work and not for others. And notice how those are just the women I named. <laughs> Her. Wow, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. 
The good thing is that even though you do lose money in the music business, mm -hmm. you get a coin from everything that comes from the music you're making. So true. it's like almost the music is almost like the ad. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a business and sometimes it's sad to think of it that way, but that's why tours go big and yeah. everything. That's where you make your money and the big brand deals. So that's like a fact that not too many people know. They think it's like this huge high life thing. And yes, you might get a big lump sum of money in the beginning or you might have a huge recording budget and right. you think the label's paying for it, but at the end of the day, you're paying for it. Mm. It's coming out of you. Yeah. So whatever you made from that album, you get that after whatever has been paid off. Mm. So it's like a loan. That is a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah. makes it hard for you to be a creative artist because exactly. it's like so much crazy business that goes yeah. into it. So I'm learning, especially now as a solo artist, I have to have multiple hats. Me yeah. as my creative, which is where I want to spend most of my time. But then I also have to put like on my business mind hat because if you don't, you could get screwed over. And so I put that audio clip because I love Chloe's transparency and she's telling a lot about how the music industry is. And this isn't just for smaller artists like Chloe. You know, Chloe is a very small artist. You know, she's known, but she's not making the, you know, big waves and impact of a larger artist like a Sabrina Carpenter or a SZA or anybody else like that. Um, but this happens for large artists too. This is happening in the same exact way that Chloe is mentioning it, but also for larger artists who we would think, you know, it wouldn't apply to. It's happening for a lot of people, a lot of people. So anyway, I want to get into part of this clip of her speaking about like her record label drama, and then we'll talk about that a bit, and then also her live. Someone said, why haven't you been performing? Trust me, I would be performing if I could. The thing is, is that money goes into performances. So it's not free to do performances and you have to get budgets approved and things like that. So if I could, I'd be performing everywhere. Um. Okay, you guys, so that was Chloe. She was speaking a little bit about her album and performances and kind of explained the, to the fans um, what was happening in regards to that. And I know her album didn't do the greatest, um, you know, commercially, like neither did in pieces, but I still would have thought she would have had a small tour going. But again, like she said, it does cost money to do this uh, for the stage, for the set, for the venue, for everything. And, you know, they're not going to put on a tour if they don't feel like people are going to come out or enough people are going to come out to where they're making more money than they spent on the tour. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate because I'm sure she probably thought she would be in a different place in her career at this point, um, especially off the heels of Have Mercy. And I think that everybody has wanted that for her. But, you know, hopefully she... But, you know, people can have resurgences in their careers, you know, and it might be a minute that you're kind of underground, not necessarily underground, but not as known and popular. And then you get a couple of hits that send you skyrocketing, like look at Sabrina Carpenter, you know, she was making music for a while, for years and years and years. And she was under the radar. People knew who she was, but not a lot of people listened to her like that. She had her core people and that was really it. Um, and then she popped off with uh, Espresso and, you know, her hit album now. So it can happen. It can happen. So um, but let's go ahead and get into her live. I'm just going to clip it um, at the end of this video. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye. What am I cooking in the air fryer? <laughs> Nothing right now. Makeup eight today. No, I'm just really feeling cute. The sad thing is that I gotta take my makeup off because I'm getting my lashes refilled. I have a, a strip on top of the extensions right now. So they look fuller than how they are. Yes, I'm back in LA. I had a cover shoot today. So you guys will see that in a few weeks. So this was my makeup from my cover shoot. I'm excited. I really like the outfits. Will I ever remove my locks? No, but look how they're eating right now. You see my edges? They're eating, right? Someone said I heard you on Breakfast Club today. How did you, what did you think? Did you like it? 
Someone said you were great on Ebru. Thank you, baby. Someone said, why do you sound like Callie so much? That's my sister. We sound alike. Someone said, let's cut to the chase. Where's the album? Trouble in Paradise is out. It's been out for a month. Today is the one month anniversary. I'm going to give you guys something exciting this week to celebrate. Someone said, you're literally glowing right now. You look so good. Really? You think so? Thanks. Who watched Fight Night? Did you guys like my character? I love playing Lena. These are my nails. Someone said, why is Gronish canceled? Gronish isn't necessarily canceled, it just finished. We did five seasons. Someone said, I love how you ate the scene with Samuel L. Jackson. You guys thought I ate? Like the live, like the live. Say hello to me. Love coming from St. Lucia. I miss St. Lucia so bad. Honestly, guys, I have been exhausted. Like, you don't realize I just fapped that movie, went straight to press. I'm exhausted right now. Um, I was gonna do New York Fashion Week, which would have been bomb, but the cover shoot that I had to do was a little more exciting in the end. So this was the time to shoot it. Do you miss seeing me at the fashion shows? Do you remember when I did the Louis Vuitton one? That one was, I think, my favorite. You were amazing in fight night. Thank you so much. Beautiful album. I heard the growth sonically. I'm really ha happy that you did. Lip combo. Oh, I wish I knew because I loved it. He like, he did, I believe, cork liner and then he, for the lip color, he did like a blush. I gotta ask him. Someone said, please get right with God before it's too late. <laughs> Am I not? I don't know why but that shirt's making my head look long. I do have a big head. What's the surprise to celebrate the album that's been out for a month? We'll have to see, but it'll be out this week for sure. Favorite would eat on Love Island. Oh, yes. Like you're picking your favorite lover. Zodiac for all the newcomers. I'm a cancer. Um, you did so good with all of your interviews. Well spoken. Thank you. I saw something today. I saw a couple tweets today. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> Talking about how boring of an individual I am. <laughs> and I was like, I'm boring? It's like you can't ever really... Boring's good, right? I stay to myself. The reason I stay to myself is because this industry is crazy. And if I was so mixy, I would have like self-identity issues. Like you have to say to yourself, you have to keep your circle small to save yourself <laughs> necessarily. Like this industry is nuts. Nobody knows how crazy this industry is. Like if you all knew what I have been through and knew the stories, you would be surprised that I'm still even doing this. So I have to be boring for my mental health. So, I mean, not that I have to please everybody or stuff like that, but come on. That like made me go like, what? Like I can never do enough. Like I do a bunch of press, I do this, and it's like, I'm boring because I keep certain things hidden and private. Come on. Yeah, boring is good. These folks are crazy. I don't do drugs. I don't do anything like that. Like I'd much rather be boring. I'd much rather be boring. So I was like, am I wrong for being slighted, for feeling slighted by that? I was like, yeah, I'm boring, but it's not a bad thing. I just stayed with myself, my family. That's how I have a good head on my shoulders. Like y'all have no idea. If I told you guys, 
that's the thing. Like people speak on things that they don't understand. You know? So that was like, I spill the tea of the music. I, I, I Snapchat every day. I do all these interviews. I'm like open with my fans. Like, Someone says, why do I keep touching the necklace? It's my little safety thing. Um, no, I'm not going to be amazed. Why? I never got asked to perform. So, um, let me see. Am I still filming? No, I finished filming. What's your favorite color? Favorite color is blue and gold. Did your character really die on Fright Night? I think you just have to wait to see the next episode. Would I date a non-celebrity? Yes, I would. What's your moon and rising? My moon is Libra and my rising is Virgo. Someone said, I went to St. Lucia because you kept talking about it. And what did you think? Did you like it? What happened to Midas Touch biopic movie? Um, it's still in the works. You know, there's so many jobs that I book, but you know, with um, the strike, priorities changed and stuff with certain studios. So that's what happens. Would you give a guy a second chance? Depends on what he did to lose out on me the first time. I do believe in second chances sometimes. What if he cheated on you? Um, for me, that's the thing I'm torn. Like, I feel like if you are just in a relationship, no kids, no strings attached, and he cheats, I feel like leave because if you take him back for cheating, then he will just feel like he can do it again. Uh, you know? Would I make gospel music? Yes, I would. Am I single? Dating? Is it complicated? Hmm. What's my favorite TV show right now? I haven't really been, lashes are popping today? Okay, so there's like a strip on top of my, you see on the, inner, on the outer corner? I'm getting them filled in like 30 minutes. So after I get off live, I'm gonna go upstairs, play with Halo, and then get my lashes filled and take off my makeup. Yes, someone said, yes girl, keep your love life private. Yes, keep the love life private. People don't keep something private and then they get bashed for sharing it with the world. No, you cannot see Halo. Sorry. I am his auntie. So I keep our moments together for me. The hair eats and the makeup. You like it? What do you use for your edges? Girl, I wish I knew. I'm going to ask Fessa because she did them today. And let me tell you something. I'm going to be really transparent. <laughs> My hair is very nappy, very coarse, very, very, very coarse. And I love it. I love my hair just like that. But I need lots and lots and loads and loads of edge gel to make it look smooth like this. It's all a facade. <laughs> when I start sweating, they start shriveling up. That's why I do laser hair removal. So you don't see my little nappy hairs under my armpits, you know. I have very coarse hair. One thing about Chloe, she gatekeeps a lot. Uh, yes and no. If you read in between the lines, you would realize I share actually a lot of stuff with you guys. Would you ever show us one of your partners if it ever gets serious? I would if I get engaged or married, honestly. Only my family and friends would know. And you know my circle's small, to be honest. Like, I wouldn't, I, the things that are most special to me, I keep internal. 
Let's see. I saw you on Tamron Hall today. Good episode. You liked it? Did you guys see me break down crying over food? I'm such a simp. After I started crying, I was so embarrassed. Oh, because they really surprised me with that. So that was my, that was my reaction unprovoked. So anytime anything, you guys have a question like with what I'm doing or anything, you know my work ethic is top notch. I like to juggle things, you know, when I shot fight night, I did Coachella. So when it comes down to it, I will do any and everything. So just know it's never, it's never my work ethic or if I don't want to do something because y'all know I love working. Um, come to Africa. I would love to. I also want to find out what my roots are. Like, what's my descent? You know, some people say I'm, I look Nigerian. Some people say I look South African. I would really like to find that out. Someone says you should keep this makeup look in the stash. Mm. Your makeup is tea, Miss Bailey. You like it? And it's the lighting. The lighting in my place right now is really eating. Rest in peace, James. That broke my heart um, today. He's He has been a part of our childhood and everything like that. And that really made me sad today. Someone said, do you have calm music playing? Yes, I do for my baby boy Apollo because him and I both have anxiety. Um, I saw something that I wanted to respond to, but it was scrolling too fast because I was about to pop off. What's the workout regimen? I'm going to be honest. I haven't really been working out this past month, <laughs> this past month. And to be extra, extra, extra transparent, I feel like my body's been naturally toning up because of the protein I've been consuming why don't I always go live I do always go live maybe you just missed them that's okay welcome you should visit Jamaica I love Jamaica a piece of advice I'd give younger Chloe hmm stop hiding in the shadows and speak up for yourself. A lot of times sis would have to speak up for me when we were younger. And that's what I would tell my younger self, it's okay. Like that's what I'm telling myself now. It doesn't make you a B word for setting boundaries, having standards, and letting people know what you will and will not accept. I think that's so important for us to instill in the youth, especially young women, how is Halo so cute? Because he looks like me. <laughs> Sorry. Any advice for depression? Yes. Um, I'll tell you what has helped me. Surround yourself with people that you love that can pull you out of it. Because it's hard to pull yourself out when you're in the hole by yourself. You know, the, the longer you stay in it, the harder it is to get out. Find a hobby that distracts your mind. What else? Give yourself grace. Don't beat up yourself for feeling depressed. Accept it, allow yourself to feel. And cause none of us are perfect. That's what I would say. And just hold on. And nev something else that always helps me, nothing ever stays the same. So even if it feels really bad and really dark today, just know two weeks from now, it'll get a little lighter. That's what I tell myself that helps me. So I hope things get better for you. I love you and you are gonna get out of it, okay? And it's, uh, an, it's a battle that goes like this. One day you'll feel great, one day you'll feel not great at all. So just give yourself grace. Um, do you think it's okay to date a guy for an entire year? Yeah. 
I'm such a relationship girl. I love relationships. Someone also said, get professional help. Going back to the thing, I am such a huge advocate for therapy. Therapy, I love. Can we get a music video to favorite? I would love to have a music video to favorite. <laughs> How to keep being productive when you're depressed to be honest whenever i would be in that space i would run to work to distract my mind which isn't very healthy at the same time because i would run for distractions so you gotta have like a healthy balance what's your ideal relaxing day being in saint lucia swimming in the ocean Can we get a tea time, please? Of course, y'all know I love tea time. Um, Chloe, have you ever thought about hiring writers? Meaning for my songs? You don't like how I write songs? But I, I collab with a lot of writers. I take songs from writers too. Some of the songs I haven't written on. So. What's a problem you have now that you didn't have before fame? Well, to be honest, I've kind of always been in the spotlight. I've been creating and working since I was three and a half. It's really all I've known. So I don't really know how to answer that in the best way. Why is it so bright there? Uh, that is true. Yeah, you're right. It's like 6 p.m. over here. Do you have any shallow deal breakers? Mm. I say that I wouldn't date anyone with a kid because I don't want to have to compete with the baby mom because I feel like the baby mom and the baby father share something very sacred that I know I'll never be able to compete with. Maybe that's a shallow deal breaker, but I say that now I've never been in that situation with someone I've really cared about, so I don't really know. But for right now, that's my shallow deal breaker, especially if they're young kids. Now, if they're a little older, that's different, but if they're younger, you know, that's just something I'll never be able to compete with. Can I get breakup advice? What do you need advice on? How to break up with somebody or how to take someone breaking up with you? How do you deal with death in family? Oof. By the grace of God, um, let me knock on some wood. By the grace of God, I've only really had one serious death in the family. It was my late cousin Tyreek, may he rest in peace. He was a year older than me. That was the first and only one that really was heartbreaking for me. And I was really upset with God. But I realized that he's my guardian angel now. And how you deal with it is you just got to feel it and go through it. There's really no way to, everybody grieves differently. And I even remember a year later, I would just randomly break down crying about it. But thank you guys for the condolences. This was like four years ago, at least so. But to answer your question, there's really no set process. Yeah, someone said I'm having a hard time grieving right now. I'm truly sorry. I'm truly, someone said, why did you knock on the wall? I'm kind of superstitious. Anything I don't want to happen, I just knock on wood, and that's wood. Temporarily single is so slept on. I know. Guys, I wish I could tell you the feature that was on it that didn't get cleared. Ah, oh, do you want me to tell you? And it was so good, too. It was so good, but it didn't get cleared. tell you for real it ate down will I get in trouble for telling you I was like we can keep a secret yeah right you want me to tell you it was it ate down it was like a bona fide hit with that person on it like it was like straight to the moon but they couldn't get it the label couldn't clear it um, you want me to tell you? It was Rema. Oh, it broke my heart. I had to go back to the original maybe a week before I announced the project. Oh, it broke my heart. It ate down. 
It was so good. It was like a bona fide smash. I know, I know. I know, that's life. But, and then that, and another one that I was really sick about was the amazing song I had with my girl Anita. The video was fire, we had the whole video done. Cleared the video, approved it maybe a month before. That's another heartbreaking thing. There's so much stuff that you guys have no idea that hasn't come out. Like features with really big artists that I've had that's never seen the light of day. Someone said accidentally leak it. No, I'm not the type of person. I wouldn't want them anybody to do that to me. But so, mm-hmm. Someone said, did I really do that tweet that said just shit on him? No, I did not. I, I see it go viral all the time and I never tweeted that. I never tweeted that. <laughs> Why did I help rob that party? In Fight Night, um, you gotta watch it to see. Someone said, does he talk you through it? <laughs> Who? I do, you know, I have a way with words. I, I do like, you know, words. <laughs> um, maybe two more questions and then, is my hair real? Yes and no. You see my locks? Oh, the thing's covering it. Up here. <laughs> okay, why does it keep doing that every time I try to show you? You see? That's real, and my hair is real up to here underneath these faux locks. Okay. Last question. Have you made any alt leaning music? That's all I make. That's all the stuff that's on my laptop. But it's quite emo. It's kind of depressing. Like Hallie and my godmom and Joe and Branson, they say that my playlist is just filled with depressing music. <laughs> emo. So that's really all that I make, but it's kind of sad. <laughs> Daughter or son first? Mm, whatever God wants me to have first. I think I just want... You know, someone said I love depressive music. Me too, baby. No question, but you're so pure and I love you. Thank you. I love you. Anything outside of music that you do to be creative? I build Legos. If that counts. Mm, you know? Okay, guys, that was fun. I love you. I love you very much. Hope you have a blessed day. I had so much fun. I can't wait for you guys to see this cover shoot. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to go sneak some kisses from Halo and take off my makeup. And then get my lashes filled. Okay. I love you guys. Bye.